of the Tristan Islands group. Lying in the center of the South Atlantic, it's 200 kilometers from the other islands in the group. And as dawn revealed its rocky ramparts and steep cliffs, I wondered how we were going to land. It's uninhabited, apart from a weather station. And the meteorologists stationed here have a novel way of getting to work. The only way to get up onto Gough Island. What a way to get up onto one of the most remote islands in the world. It's incredible. Gough also has its own unique species, found nowhere else in the world. The ancestors of the Gough Moorhen somehow managed to find their way to this remote spot where it evolved into a new endemic species. Now, it's almost flightless. All islands are precious for wildlife. Because of the way evolution works, on such small and isolated specks of land. Islands are crucibles of evolution, engines that drive the emergence of new plant and animal species. Many plants and animals evolve on islands in unusual and unpredictable ways. Many island species become giant or miniature. Birds and insects often lose their wings and become flightless. Crabs take over the land and strange plants such as these tree ferns, become dominant. This happens because island life has adapted to new habitats, new niches, new food sources, and the absence of usually dominant species and predators. But these factors that created island life also make those same island species exceptionally vulnerable. One of the most vulnerable is the Atlantic yellow-nosed albatross, Although it ranges far and wide over the Southern Oceans, they all return to breed on the Tristan group of islands. Here, they raise their single huge chicks amongst the endemic tree ferns. But the chicks are now under threat from an unlikely predator. As hard as it is to land on this island, House mice were introduced here as stowaways on visiting ships in the 19th century. And within the past two centuries, they have evolved to exploit an abundant source of protein, the albatross chicks. Mice up to 27 centimeters in length, including their tails, have been recorded. They attack at night, nipping the poor albatross chicks at their sides often causing horrific injuries, and eventually, often the death of the birds. Because the birds have evolved here without any predators at all, they simply don't even recognize the house mice as a threat. The chicks, like this little albatross chick behind me, have absolutely no defense behavioral mechanisms to, to protect themselves. Because the chicks have no defences, the monster mice of Goff can simply eat the albatross chicks alive. Thousands of seabirds are thought to be killed by the monster mice of Goff Island each year. As the island is the main home of the Tristan albatross, as well as other endemic species, the long-term impact of the monster mice is very troubling. It's feared that the continued predation of the seabird chicks might push some unique bird species into extinction. As islands harbor disproportionate amounts of unique species, they're among the most important habitats in the world to protect. As small isolated flecks of land, they often contain more unique endemic species than entire landlocked countries, thousands of times their size. It is within our power 
to restore balance to island ecosystems. Non-native plants and animals can be eradicated, populations of native species can be nurtured and rebuilt, and even entire ecosystems can be restored. But now, though, is the time to act. The coming decades will reveal whether these miniature, unique worlds are lost forever or preserved for the future.